Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will bless today's message, O Lord. Enlighten the hearts of these listeners and let your word be rightly divided. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, welcome to the Gospel Revival Outreach Program. 1 Timothy 4.1, Paul writes, Now the Spirit expressively says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. My friend, a heretic is a person who deliberately rejects the clear teachings and doctrines of God's word and devises his or her own ideas, incorporating them in the faith as truth. Heretics reject the word of God and interpret the scriptures for themselves. I want to talk to you today about a heretic that lived nearly 300 years ago. This man has done more damage and caused more confusion in the Christian faith than all other heretics combined. His name is John Wesley. John Wesley, 2 Peter 2.1 But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. In case you don't know who John Wesley is, let me give you, my friend, a short history lesson. John Wesley lived in the 1700s. Wesley was the first heretic to teach and propagate such errors as the falling away of true saints, sinless perfection, that is, believers can reach a point of sinlessness. He taught and encouraged women preachers and pastors. He also claimed for himself miraculous healings and dreams. He encouraged wailing and falling down in his church and in his meetings. Wesley is the forerunner and grandfather to the holiness movement, the Pentecostal movement, the charismatic movement, and the word faith movement. He also dabbled with the idea of speaking in tongues, which had long ceased in the early Christian church. My friend, the Bible says in Hebrews 13:9. Do not be carried away with various and strange doctrines. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 9 and Mark 7, 7, And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Peter, speaking of Paul's epistles, wrote in 2 Peter three sixteen, Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Second Timothy 3.13 But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Second Timothy 4, 3 and 4 Paul writes to Timothy, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. In Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 and 3, God warns Israel about dreamers. The Bible says, If there arises you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or wonder, verse 3, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. John Wesley's teachings have brought more confusion in the Christian faith than any other false teacher could have ever dreamed of. His teachings have grown in such popularity that his followers today, those of the Holiness, Pentecostal, Charismatic, and Word Faith movements, combined are second only in popularity to the Roman Catholic Church. Today we are going to do as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15. We are going to study to show ourselves approved and rightly dividing the Word of God. We are going to examine John Wesley's teachings and compare these teachings with Bible. The Bible versus John Wesley. Let me educate you in the history of the holiness and Pentecostal movements. Two revivalists in the early 1800s, Asa Mayan and Charles Finney, advanced John Wesley's 
erroneous theology by claiming in 1836 to be the first to experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost, continuing to spread of this holiness doctrine was Phoebe Palmer. She claimed to be the first to receive a false doctrine called the second blessing. That is to become 100% sanctified in the flesh. Therefore, she claimed to have reached a state of sinlessness. In 1901, Charles Parham, father of the Pentecostal movement, advanced the theologies of John Wesley and Phoebe Palmer into another level by having the idea that this spiritual baptism should be accompanied with manifestations such as speaking in tongues. In 1901, Parham and a handful of his followers claimed to have experienced tongues as evidence of their baptism. But get this, my friend, in only a few years, this supposed manifestation of the Holy Spirit grew to such a level, even Charles Parham believed it to be demonic. This is frightening. The very founder and creator of the Revised Tongues Theology, after following the teachings of John Wesley, believed them later to be demonic. It should not be left out that Charles Parham, the father of the Pentecostal movement, was a racist, a full-fledged member of the Ku Klux Klan. Nevertheless, the Pentecostal and holiness practices continue to spread in the 1960s, branching from the Holiness and Pentecostal movements, the Charismatic Movement was born. This movement is, is not based on theology at all, only what one supposedly experiences in miracles and healing. Today, these movements have been the backbone of the Word Faith Movement, teaching miracles, bizarre manifestations, healings, uncontrollable laughter, and demonic confrontations. Believing even God is subject to the words of their quote-unquote anointed ministers. My friend, how far are these dangerous and demonic false doctrines going to go? Doctrines of men, not doctrines of God. Let me again read 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit expressively says that in the latter time some will de depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. All these movements trace their roots to the teachings of John Wesley. Let's take a look at his theology and compare it to what the Bible has to say. John Wesley versus God's Holy Word. First, John Wesley taught that true believers could fall away and go to hell. What does the Bible say? Let's take a look at some scriptures. 1 Peter 1, 3-5 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now the Bible here says believers are kept by the power of God through faith. The Bible says this is an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. God keeps us by his power through the gift of his faith. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. God gives you grace, salvation, and faith. Everything you need to be saved and remain saved. That's why the Bible says in Colossians 2.10, and you are complete in Him. Philippians 1.6, be confident of this very thing, that he who, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Not may complete it, depending on you, but he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Ephesians 1.13 In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. 1 John 2.19 John, speaking to believers about apostates, they, 
Notice pronouns in the Bible, my friends. They're very important. They were not of us. They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Ephesians 4.30 And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. My friend, the scriptures disproving Wesley's theology of fallen saints go on and on and on. We also know believers can never lose their salvation by not only what the Bible says, but what it doesn't say. Jesus said a man must be born again. Never does the Bible speak of a Christian becoming unborn. We are told in the Bible all believers are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, but there is not even one case in the entire New Testament that says the Spirit left anyone. Hebrews 10.39, speaking of Christians, we are not of those who draw back to perdition. Now John Wesley says we are of those who draw back, but the Bible says we are not of those who draw back to perdition. Perdition being defined as destruction, which consists of eternal misery in hell. The writer of Hebrews declares Christians are not of those who draw back. The Bible evidence is overwhelming against John Wesley's idea of lost salvation. It is widely viewed by those who do not understand the doctrine of eternal security, that the belief in eternal security gives someone the license to sin. But my friend, this is not the case. Those who understand the truth of the doctrine of eternal security, while understanding their liberty in Christ, also understand that those who practice sin are not dwelt with the Holy Spirit and are not saved at all. Those who understand the true doctrine of eternal security enjoy a closer and more obedient fellowship with God, knowing that the Father will not zap away his child's salvation every time his child stumbles or does something imperfect as all Christians do. Which leads us to the second false teaching of John Wesley, the erroneous teaching of sinless perfection. Wesley taught a two-tiered salvation. The first was forgiveness of sin, and the second was entire sanctification, later called the second blessing. This entire sanctification, this so-called second blessing, is a total false doctrine and is found nowhere, I repeat, nowhere in the Word of God. No one in the Old Testament, all those holy men of God, Those great prophets, not one of them ever claimed to have reached a state of sinlessness. All the disciples of Jesus, the apostles, all the writers of the New Testament under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, even the apostle Paul, never claimed to have reached a state of sinlessness. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say about sinless perfection. My friend, Where do I begin on this one? Because the entire theme of the Bible is that the righteous still sin and cannot reach a state of sinlessness and must rely on Jesus as our advocate at the right side of the Father's throne pleading our case. The only human who was ever sinless was Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And for anyone to claim sinlessness is to be equal with God and outright blasphemy. Let's start with 1 John 1, 8. If we, notice the pronoun, if we say we have no sin, we deceive our own selves, and the truth is not in us. Friends, I ask that you will return tomorrow night at 10 o'clock for the conclusion of this message, the Bible versus John Wesley. Gospel Revival Outreach Ministries is here to declare the truth of the Word of God and to evangelize the gospel. We are not supported by any group, church, or denomination. We are solely reliant upon your prayers and financial support. You can support this ministry. You can keep this ministry on the air. You can write to me at Gospel Revival Outreach Ministries. You can just write G-R-O-M, G-R-O-M, P.O. Box 1151, P.O. Box 1151, Roland, North Carolina, Roland, North Carolina, 28383. Trust in Jesus today for the forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name,